Okay, but in your writing, you've had some very um, useful examples of what's meant by the constructor law in, in nature. You use the example of the human lung. You use the example of a river system. Uh, you use the example of a tree. Would you mind drawing one of those just so that someone can actually visualize what you mean by the structure that underlies a flow system? What yeah. does that look like? That uh, starts from the area. Here is the uh, whole area receiving uh, water. And uh, uh, water uh, seeps downhill. The rain keeps falling. This water is looking for uh, a lower space, or uh, called a valley, and before you know it, uh, where there was just um, uh, wet mud, a, a stream develops. Instead of, uh, well, the water in the first rivulet finds it easier to flow by uh, flowing together with a neighbor. And then this goes on for the, uh, uh, on the entire uh, territory. You get, uh, you get uh, the big river that uh, finally uh, discharges itself uh, either straight into a, uh, the ocean, which is through an estuary, or through a, uh, an estuary plugged by, uh, by silt, which is called delta. And the delta is the um, uh, reverse of this design, uh, meaning if this is uh, exhaling from the lung, the delta is inhaling the uh, water of the big river. Could you simply uh, phrase the constructor law? The constructor law in the uh, simplest way is uh, uh, as follows. For a uh, flow system to persist in time, which means to live, it must uh, evolve freely such that it provides easier and easier access to its currents. So everything that flows from uh, an area to one point um, impresses us with the drawing of a tree. Uh, not only the tree in the garden, but uh, the tree of the river basin, the tree of the human lung, the tree of uh, the snowflake. Um, and um, so uh, this is the phenomenon of, of uh, design or organization in nature.